Hi, welcome you to yet another video and this time we are going to discuss about force or moment envelope. This is again a question that most of the beginners have a doubt on what needs to be considered a load combination or envelope for design of members. Hi everyone, this is Premjit here from Sibilara.com and we are going to elaborate on this particular topic today. Force envelopes and its use and limitations. Let me also suggest you that you read the blog first and then get into the video. So if you are seeing this video, I suggest you go to the blog post and read the blog post completely and then come back to the video. So the link to the blog is in the description. Now the difference is that in the blog I have covered a bit about loads then why we need to split the loads and then about load combinations and then I have come back to force envelope and the reasons that we can use force envelope for some designs and for some designs we cannot use. So this will be clear if you read the blog first and then come to the video. In the video I am only explaining about the envelope and its use and limitation. Now why do we need a force envelope? This is what I am going to tell you first. Now you know that you have various load combinations and I would request you again to look at the blog if you have confusion on that and understand which are the load combinations first. So generally you will have 26 ultimate combinations which are factored combinations and then you have 18 unfactored combinations as well for serviceability. This is what you generally have when you are doing a regular building structure. So you will have 26 ultimate combinations which are factored combinations for strength and 18 combinations for serviceability. So this is what you generally get. Now when you have such huge number of combinations then it will become difficult for you to design a beam from different combination values. Say for example if you have a bending moment diagram like this which I will draw again say dead load live load gave you a moment diagram like this and you have 20 moment here and then you have 60 moment here and say 19 moment here on your beam. Now for the earthquake combination say another combination you have this as something like this say this is 40 and then this is 45 and then you have here 60 say this is your moment. Now for a third combination could be wind or earthquake in the other direction assume that you have something like this where you have 70 and then you have here 50 and then you have here 30. Now you have to design your beam for the maximum moment here which is 70 and then you have to design your span for this which is 60 and then your left moment for 50. So you have different combinations which are critical. So for design of a beam you may have to look through 26 combinations to arrive at the critical load combination. So a force envelope is nothing or a moment envelope is nothing but a superimposition of all these in one shot. For example if you want to superimpose all your combinations so this will be your dead load live load then you have your second combination then you have your third combination moment superimposed and then you have your fourth one. So if you do this you are going to get a diagram which represents a complete information of your 26 load combinations. So in one pick or in one diagram you are able to see the maximum at this location, the maximum at this location and the maximum at this location. It's like using a tracing paper drawing moment diagram of each of your load combinations separately and then superimposition of that. So you can design this section for the maximum moment here, this section for the maximum moment here, this section for this particular moment. So that's how the moment envelope helps you. So moment envelope is a superimposed bending moment diagram of all the combinations that you have in that particular project. Same way you can have shear force superimposed and you can call it as a force envelope. It's as simple as that. Now when can you not use envelope? You can use envelope for your beam design because your shear design and your moment designs are independent to each other. Let us assume an example. Assume that you have a beam 
and say load combination 1 gave you this particular value say 40 60 and say 50 now another load combination gave you something else and finally let us assume that your envelope is giving you something like this so your critical moment is 70 50 and say 60 so this is your final design moment for this particular beam now similarly you will also have a shear force diagram which will have the maximum so this may be from load combination 1 and this may be from load combination 5 and this may be from load combination 10 we never know so it could be a mix of different load combinations which is giving you the critical value now when it comes to shear force same way your shear critical shear may be from load combination 3 load combination 7 and load combination 9 we never know so it could be all mixed up but this is not going to matter because your shear force design and your moment design are not interrelated they don't affect each other even though your shear capacity is dependent on the ast of your beam the main steel of your beam that's not going to interfere in your design it's not going to clash over because your moment is 50 and whatever is the steel needed you are going to provide that so even if your shear is decided by another load combination you anyway have the steel needed for 50 there so even though the load combinations are different you are going to have the steel for 50 so you are going to take that ast as the contributing tossy and therefore your shear design is independent of that so anyway you have that particular steel there so it, your design is not going to be wrong because you are taking tossy based on the ast provided so anyway you are going to give that steel for 50 at that particular section so it doesn't really matter if your load combination for shear is different but when you have torsion in your beam the case becomes different because your torsional value say for example if you have 50 moment here and the torsion corresponding to that particular combination could be 10 whereas a torsion compared to another load combination may be 60 so if you take 50 and 60 torsion into consideration and then design you are over designing your beam by very large magnitude if you know your design for torsion is nothing but a fictitious addition of your torsional moment to your mu so i would request you to refer relevant clauses of is 456 for this understanding because design for torsion is nothing but adding your torsional moment onto your mu by an empirical formula so i am not going to get into that right now that you can refer is 456 and understand how torsion is being attended to it's nothing but a fictitious addition you have a formula you have your main moment that is 50 in this case and then you are going to add a additional torsional moment mt based on a formula and then you are going to design so that's where the problem comes because your actual torsion for this particular combination is only 10 but in the envelope you are going to get that as 60 which is coming from a different combination so here the forces are interactive it is not directly addable because you have to add the corresponding combination value so if you take envelope of moment and envelope of torsion you are going to mess it up but if you have released your torsion or if you don't have torsion in your beam then you are allowed to use the envelope so this needs to be kept in mind when you are designing for torsion you cannot directly add or you cannot directly consider the torsional component you cannot do that because your torsional value should be from the corresponding combination so 50 plus whatever contribution of this 10 comes as torsional moment that needs to be added not the other combination so finally you will end up designing 26 times if you want to get the right result because 60 is quite high the moment for that the mz or m3 in etaps that particular moment corresponding to 60 may be lesser but then 60 has a larger contribution so you cannot say that maximum moment is going to govern because torsional component when you add both together a different combination can govern so you have to be careful so this is the same case with column design as well because in column you have pu you have m 
33 or MUX and you have M22 or MUY. This is your minor axis moment and this is your major axis moment. So when you have 26 combinations, say you have 1000 here, you have 10 here, you have 2 here. Say you have another combination, you have 800 here, you have 60 here, you have 1 here. Another combination, you have 900 here, then you have 5 here and then say 30 here. Like this you have 26 combinations. Now your design should be 26 times for these. You cannot take 1000, 60 and 30 and design because these are coming from three different combinations. Say for example, this is dead load plus live load factor combination and this is dead load plus earthquake X and this could be dead load minus earthquake X. I'm just telling as an example. So you cannot take this combinations P and mix it with this combinations MX because these are two different occurrences. In this you don't have a component of earthquake. In this you don't have minus EQX. You don't have live load as well. So this is a different combination. So you cannot say that I will design for the worst combination or I will design for the worst envelope like this. That's wrong to do because you are mixing the cases. For example, this is from minus direction earthquake in the other direction from this direction whereas this is from this direction. So you cannot mix things up. You are taking envelope fine but then you cannot do this. You have to design 1000 for 10 corresponding moments like this one time. Then you have to design 800. 60 this as a second design this as a third design you cannot mix it up because these forces are interactive if you club 1060 and 30 and design most of the times you will get a very high result because that's how it is it's not really right to do sometimes this may be a wind load combination so you are not even required to consider earthquake and wind at the same time so you are manifold increasing your column steel so for all these reasons, you are not allowed to take envelope. Same is the case with the foundation design or sizing. If you have fixed your base, if you have pinned your base, that's fine because all your P value are going to be maximum. So you get the end, you take the envelope, you get the maximum P value. But if you have fixed, then you have three forces. You have unfactored P you have unfactored moment your foundation sizing is based on unfactored loads so you have axial load unfactored you have mx and you have my so the same thing as in a column you cannot mix this up you cannot take the envelope you have to do it 18 times because you have 18 unfactored load combinations so you have to do for that you cannot mix things up so i hope this is clear to you now you have a provision to use envelope but then you need to use it correctly you can use it for beam design you cannot use it for the column design or for foundation sizing i once more suggest you to read the blog entirely because here i have only mentioned about the main points regarding the envelope and combination if you have any doubts on this topic you can comment or ask your question in the forum I will give the exact link in the description or in the comment. It will also be there in the blog so you can use this forum for your benefit to discuss any doubts that you have on this particular topic. So thank you for watching. I hope you understood about envelope and its use and its restriction.